together if you know that was a comforting word and just applaud the choir such an amazing group of people so though you may be you may be wearing your mask so that means if you're not wearing your mask wear your mask just wink at your neighbor tell them just wink with them just just say you know if you speak they may not hear you so just wink at them that's you smiling that's you saying how are you just wink at wink at the other one in case you didn't say hi to the other one I don't know how many people like me. Sometimes you have, you have winking problem. And your neighbor is like, are you eyeing me? I will eye you back. In the presence of the Lord, as soon as of joy. There's such a, there's such a, there's, there's such a, there's such a cooking presence. I don't know how to explain it. It's a, it's a pregnant possibility kind of presence. It's a, it's a presence that is, Ladies, you know that thing that you guys put when you do your nails and you want to dissolve it? What do you call it? Wow! Legendary! I feel there is a dissolving anointing. And it's dissolving mountains. Like, I don't know who came here very... You came... You, you, you wore parachute. Like, you came with all your bodies and you wore it inside one jacket. And God is saying, I'm going to dissolve it. I'm going to make a nonsense of it. You see, you will live here and the enemy will try to remind you how you came. And you say, me? Never. Because it would have dissolved every single thing. How many of you trust God for that word? Can you just say, I will see it in my life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Wow. Last week was something, in it? <laughs> Please, if you were not in church, last week someone is not the kind of one that you want to miss. Please go to our YouTube page. It's already, in fact, I knew the severity of that sermon by how fast my media team put it up. Monday it was up. No time to say no time. So guys, please, I want you to go listen to it. It's called The Time of Life and it was a bit of an introductory sermon. And um, I will be taking the part two today. And I'm going to be looking at time in similarity with seasons and we're just going to be trusting God to do what he wants to do one of it is dissolving mountains, hallelujah glory to God so I remember that the last scripture that I really sat on um, was Ephesians 5 so maybe we can just dash back there so that we can you know, gain some form of context alright Ephesians 5, verse 15. When we're talking about, don't be foolish. Oh, thank you, Lord. Okay, I guess it's there. All right. So it says, so be careful. I'm using the NLT. It says, so be careful how you live. Don't live like fools. <laughs> but like those who are wise... Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Don't be drunk with wine, because you will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Sing in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs amongst yourself. And making music to the Lord in your heart. Alright, before I do this, the Lord actually laid it on my heart and I forgot last week and I'm about to forget today again, so I'm not going to forget because that's what we have the Holy Spirit for. I want us to rise up and pray for Pastor Taiwo Dukoya. And the prayer point is going to be very simple. Father Lord, uphold your son. I want you to pray that the Lord will uphold him with his mighty hand. Uphold him with his marvelous hand. Uphold him in every area. I want you to commit the life 
of the senior pastor into God's hands that Lord come through for him as a comforter we rejoice through Christ Father Lord strengthen him and his family uphold them they will not dash their foot against the stone evil will have no room in them the Lord will be their sure guard he will be with them as a pillar of fire and a pillar of cloud let us pray intensely and say Father Lord with this man you will do mighty things on this earth no matter what the enemy is trying to implement he has failed because Jesus died on the cross and he rose again I also want you to pray for his children his sister, his family every single one that is connected to the choir family I want you to say that Father Lord none will dash their foot against a stone the Lord will be with them his very present help he is their very present help in time of trouble you will wipe the tears from their eyes you will give them a new song. You will give them a new song. In the name of Jesus. Now I want you to pray for the fountain of life church. I want you to pray for yourself. Because you are a part of that body. That you are protected from every fiery dart of the enemy. Every plan of darkness to distract you. Is abolished and dismissed the Bible says they shall come against you one way but they shall flee seven ways the Bible says build up the, uh, 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 put on the whole armor of God so that you can be able to stand against the walls of the enemy I want you to decree that God is our protector our very present help in time of trouble I will not be afflicted I will not be in pains I heard now there is a flu going around it will not come near me in the name of Jesus I am covered by blood and this blood speaketh better things than the blood of Abel I am delivered, I am set free no bloodline pattern that is demonic can afflict me because I am in Christ I am a new creature the old is gone, the new has come then I want you to pray that Father Lord send forth a mighty revival in this time. And Salibradoshi Kalabrayadaba. A mighty revival in us, with us. In Jesus' name we prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. You may please be seated. I please want to enjoin you, please make it a habit to pray for your leaders it's even in the bible it says pray for your governors pray for your leaders so that you can live a peace and enviable life please pray for us pray for myself pray for my wife um yes okay so my wife is not here obviously yeah um she went for administration yesterday and the airline that she used powerful people delayed the flight from 6 25 to 12 15 6 p.m to 12 a.m so she got into Lagos at 2 a.m. thereabout, or one and a half, yeah, one, one something in the midnight. So we had to advise that she stays in a hotel close to the airport. But I'm sure she's joining online. I'm sure she's streaming online. So that's it. All right. So we're talking about Ephesians 5, verse 15. He said, Do not be fools. He says, Don't act thoughtlessly. But understand what the Lord wants to do with you. Don't be drunk with wine because it will ruin your life. No. So I read this and I think that part of don't be drunk with wine caught my attention. We all know that scripture. Don't be drunk with wine until excess. We always use it in relationship with aha, fantastic. Yeah. But it's actually correct. What he's just saying, my, as like, like my wife has always said, control. Don't let alcohol control you. Let the Holy Spirit control you. But I went to somebody very, very funny in the scriptures. And as I started to read this person, I've been having very funny laughters. I don't even know that that makes sense. Funny laughters. The guy has just been trilling me. 
his mindset. Now, I've read him before, honestly. But reading him again, I've just been like, what was in your head? So we'll be looking at Solomon. <laughs> and I've just really been blessed by his style of thinking. You know what? I personally feel Solomon was that child that said, you know, my dad is the spiritual one, like all of you pastor's kids, that you're trying so hard to go outside the shadow of your father. That lets him, he's the pastor. I'm, I'm going to live my life like it's golden. Right? And I think God just allowed him to so that we can actually see certain things. So let's open our Bibles to Ecclesiastes. Maybe we'll start from 2. Let's just open our Bibles to 2 verse 24. If we were to read the resume of Solomon, we would say he was the wisest man on earth, right? We would also say he was the richest. All right. So quite a lot of attributes to Solomon, something that a lot of us will want to glean from because he had two things that I think in our modern day time we want to pray for. But see what Solomon was saying. I'm going to read verse 2 from 24. It says, so I decided that there is nothing better to enjoy. I mean, so I decided there is nothing better than to enjoy food and drink and to find satisfaction in work. Then I, then I realized that these pleasures are from the hands of God. For who can eat and enjoy anything apart from him? God gives wisdom, knowledge, and joy to those who please him. But if a sinner becomes wealthy, God takes the wealth away and gives it to him who please him. This too is meaningless, like chasing the wind. But maybe that will not catch your attention. Let's go to verse 1. 2 verse 1. This is what Solomon said. He said, I said to myself, come on, let's try pleasure. Let's look for the good things of life. How many of us want the good things of life? Now, because we are saying his relationship to Solomon, hands are down. Please, we want the good things of life. But I want you to see what happens when you are obsessed with the good things of earth. Listen to me. Obsessed with the good things of what? Earth. Now see what Solomon says. He says, let's go for the good things of life. But I found this. Two was meaningless. So I said, laughter is silly. What good does it do to seek pleasure? As much as I thought, I decided to cheer myself with wine. In consonance with what Paul was saying. Now you find out that Solomon attained a height of wisdom. But I feel that Paul attained a higher level of wisdom. Because he was saying that the fullness of enjoyment was pleasure yourself with wine. Have the finest things of life. But Paul said, even that will not give you everything that you are hoping for. That void will still be there. So for some, that is God I just need to marry before 35. Because I think they've... All right. Amen. I want you to know that as great as that pursuit is, don't let it be the overriding pursuit of life. Because when you get there, you find out that it was not a bus stop. It was actually a door. And you get into another room. Hallelujah. If I can just sit down now and I have the kind of money like Dangote. That's amazing. Right? But I, are you ready to one day just hear that you're, you, you know when you say people like that, they lost 5% shares or they lost five percent in their stocks. That's like billions. Are you ready for that kind of heart? Are you? Are you? I don't want to call it heartbreak. Are you? Is your heart ready? Are you ready to to have children that they sometimes refuse to learn because they know that money is sitting for them? You know, there is a way poverty has a way of shaping your mindset. Am I joke? Am I not saying something? There is one of the things that I found that with few some rich men that I've spoken to. They are so concerned that their children may not be able to live the life to sustain that wealth. Because it almost looks like as if when they were making the wealth, they traded time for family. So now there is wealth, but the children don't know how to manage it. Another story for another day. 
So you find out that with all those things that you actually want to achieve here on earth, I want to be rich when I become rich and famous. Who sang that song? Was it not Bez? Praise, yeah. As much as you want to be rich and famous, you need to ask yourself, is it to do something or is it the bus stop? So Solomon decided to have pleasure as a bus stop. Like, you know what? I want to give myself to everything this world can give. Every single thing. But at the end of everything, he said, this too is what? Meaningless. So if Solomon will say this is meaningless, is it to say that we should not desire them? No. He's only saying that do not make it your life pursuit. So Paul takes it from there. So Paul says, do not be drunk in wine unto excess. Don't live your life only for the pleasures of this world. But be filled with who? The Holy Spirit. If wealth was the biggest important thing that man needed on earth, it would be the first thing that Jesus would have left when he was going. But see what the Bible said. He said things like, go into the world, don't carry money. But he told them, before you go into the world, target you are endued with power from on high. Did you, can, you, can you pick the contrast? Don't carry money. Go, he said, don't carry posts. Go to the every house that you go, you'll be blessed like that. But he said that, don't try this. If you have not been what? Endued with power. So what am I trying to say, guys? There is premium to be placed in the person of the Holy Spirit. And that is why it shouldn't be an option. It is a compulsory course. Living life with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. All right. I started to look at another similarity. And I'm still talking about the time of life. And I'm going to bring it into seasons. And last week, I remember I said, I, I gave an excerpt. I said that life is, seasons are basically in three forms. There's the earning season, there's the, sorry, there's the learning season, there's the earning season, and there's the replenishing season. All right, good. Now, the learning stage or the learning season is that time of life where you are trying to understand all that God has said and you are trying to build momentum to achieve it. The learning season is such an integral part that those that bypass it, they come out premature. I'll give you another analogy. God created Adam and Eve, right? And the moment he created Adam, he created him in his image. And Adam was a born adult. He was born an adult. Isn't it? I mean, now, did we record any time that Adam grew from childhood to... Th- no. He was born an adult. Meaning that a season of his life was skipped. His childhood. You know what the Bible says? It says, train up your in the way that he should. And when he, he will not depart from. Now, Adam did not have that. Adam was in it. But he had the spirit of God. Because the Lord breathed his breath upon him. But see, something happened. Somebody said to Adam something deceptive. And Adam had no prior experience to counter those words. And he took it hook, line, and sinker. And they said, do you know that if you eat of this fruit, you will be like God? But we all know that God already said, I made you in my image. So he ate the fruit and he was deceived. And that was the first Adam. Now, if God now wants to change things by bringing the second Adam, do you also think that God will bring a man that was already born? Would he bring a man that was already advanced in age? No. He brought a child. Because he knew that there was a process that was skipped in Adam that must be in Jesus. If Jesus was going to attain the level of success, we will not skip his childhood. So very important things happen in in Jesus' childhood. 
one remarkable one that was, that was recorded was the fact that when a, was it Shiloh that was going on? He sat in the temple teaching and listening. And when his mother came, he said something that for a woman that gave birth to a child, she'll find it very strange. She said, he said, don't you know I will be in my father's house or I will be about my father's business. Now, it shows that there was a teaching, there was something that Jesus had an understanding of even while he was little. That on the day where he was anointed and says, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. When he went into temptation, or sorry, he went into the wilderness and he came out after 40 days and the enemy tried to tempt him. He had things that he could refer to from his youth. I'm sure you know that all the things he said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, were not inspired by the Holy Ghost. They were actually in the letters in Deuteronomy. So how did he know it? Come on, help me. Hit your neighbor if they are trying to feel sleepy. Yeah. How did he know it? These things that he read because he was in the temple. Can you see what I'm talking about? That the learning stage of life is so integral for the formative stage of your being. What we want to do is we are quick to earn slow to learn so somebody here they will most likely not say God I just received grace to go through this thing and master it no somebody is saying God I just want it to be out of the way so I can blow blow is good but blow is not sustainable if you do not have what it takes to make it again you look at the life of those that win money lottery it's one of the funniest ways to make money because you really do not know how it got there. There's something about when you get things always by luck or by good fortune, as they say. You would always feel that it is always there forever. And that is the biggest problem of a gambler. He always feels that today is his lucky day. Today is his lucky day. I will just be lucky today. And he gives no room for work. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? He is not learning. So, the learning stage of your life is very important. I remember that there was a time in my life where I didn't have university to enter. And the only thing, honestly, that I had to do, I, I see, it was not like as if I had a lot. I didn't have a lot to do. The only thing was to go to church. It was to go to church. But you see, that was a learning stage in my life that God needed me to do for the sake of today. When the Bible was talking about David, David being in the, uh, taking care of the flock when Samuel came, did you think he had a choice? You know why I know he didn't have a choice? All his other brothers were not there. They were there in the house for commissioning, thinking that if he be us. So David was the only one, it was literally the one task that they gave because they felt he did not qualify. That you, 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 no, 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 be you, did they find? But you see, there was something about David that did not make him grumble at that part. Because it was a learning stage for David. It was a learning stage for David. In your learning stage, characters will be tested. Characters will be tested in your learning stage. Your learning stage is that stage of your life where God starts to pressure till you find the things that are not like him and you can deal with it. You see, anger problem does not start when they bash your car. No. It's, it was always there. It was just in hibernation. Am I with somebody? Yes. The ability to curse at people is not a demon that befalls you when you are insulted. It was there. So one of the things that God uses the learning stage of our lives to do is to clear out impurities. Is somebody there with me? Is to take out impurities. 
when you find that you're in a season of life where it seems like as if God is just dealing with you and dealing with you and dealing with you, it's because of where he's taking you to. That you see, as you get higher in certain levels, the stakes get even higher too. Is somebody with me? There are certain things that God can permit in the secret place, but when you become, when you take it outside, it now starts to affect his namesake. So God starts to deal with it inside. The learning stage. For some people, the learning stage can become a season where you are alone. Like David, he was alone. He was alone. I started to think, how was it that David was, so, was able to write so much Psalms? He must have been a man of solitude. He must have been a man of solitude. The Bible said concerning David, he said, and he came into the house and Samuel said, this is him. This is him. And he anointed him in the presence of his brothers. So he had a witness. It was not something that they did secretly, right? Is somebody with me? It wasn't something they did secretly. They anointed him. So maybe somebody, somebody here, God has anointed you with a gift. People know. You say you know. I'm gifted. I'm good. I'm smart. But let's look at Saul and now also look at David. I've given an analogy of Jesus and Adam. Let's look at Saul and David. The people wanted a king and the Lord said, okay, Saul. And he gave him Saul. But Saul also had no growth process. Is somebody with me? There was no learning process for Saul. In fact, if you look at the type of leadership that God bestowed on Saul, it was a leadership of Samuel was still the one leading. Saul could not make decisions per se. Look at it, read the Bible. I don't have time. Samuel was still the one. There was nothing that Saul had built. The Bible says Saul was going to one place and he saw people prophesying and the spirit came upon him and he started to prophesy. Things just happened for Saul. There was no growth. Is somebody with me? So what now happened? The moment people started to tell Saul, Saul, we need to sacrifice. It's time we need to sacrifice. Someone is not here. What's going on? The Bible said he gave in to pressure because nothing prepared him for pressure. Is somebody there? Nothing prepared him. And the Bible said that the moment he did it, not long after Samuel came, Samuel said, Who sent you? That season passed. Saul stopped hearing God. The Bible says Saul went to a median. Do you know who a median is? Imagine somebody going to a Babala to hear from God. That was what he did. Because he had no prior experience. There was no learning stage. There was nothing that was handed to him by his father. Nothing. How did he become king? Sheep was lost. I mean, it was a donkey or something. And he went chasing after the donkey. And they said that you are going chasing after the donkey. By the time you are coming back, you are coming back a king. Nothing. But David, from the moment they anointed David, the first thing that happened was discipleship, was learning. Maybe we should go and read it. First Samuel, let's look at something. First Samuel 16. Why am I stressing this a little more? I want you to see the value in learning. I want you to see this, the, the value in a season where some people call the wilderness season of life. A season where you are doing so much but God is intentionally not allowing you shine yet. A season where you have started to make right steps but it seems like as if the speed that you thought you were going to get, you are not getting it because God is still holding you back. There is value in it. This generation, they call them the Indomie generation or the Gen something. Because we want everything fast, 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 fast. Micro, thank you very much. The microwave generation. It's great. It's great. It's great. But please, always remember, microwave is used for cooked food. You don't use microwave for raw food. Did somebody get that? Somebody didn't get that. Microwave is good for what? Cooked food. You don't use microwave. Oh, yeah, put beans inside microwave now. On dumb beans, so don't put beans and put water and put the oil and put it inside microwave. You will not get a very happy product. Because you see, there is something the pot can do. 
Though slow, the microwave cannot do dough fast. Is somebody with me? So let's go to Psalm, 1 Samuel 16. So I'm going to read from 14. It says, Now the Spirit of the Lord had left Saul, and the Lord sent a tormenting spirit that filled him with depression and fear. Some of, the, some of Saul's servants said to him, A tormenting spirit from, from God is troubling you. Let us find a good musician to play the harp whenever the tormenting spirit troubles you. He will play soothing music and you will be well again. All right, Saul said, Find me someone who plays well and, brings, and bring him here. One of the servants said to Saul, one of Jesse's sons from Bethlehem is a talented harp player. What was striking to me was they made no mention of the fact that he is a God carrier until the last verse. What am I trying to say? You see, there are certain doors that will open to you first, not because you are spiritual, but you are a person of learning. They said that this guy is a talented heart player. He said that this guy is a brave warrior. He says this guy is a man of war. This guy has good judgment. He said this man is fine looking. He's a good looking man. They now say, and the Lord is with him. See where they put that part. See where they put, and the Lord is with him. So for some of us that feel that it is Shanda, Raka, Broske, that must open the door at the detriment of, look at the qualities, my brothers. Was it look, was it look good in, what do they call it? Look good in, I know, but there's this thing that they used to say, look good in guy or something. Was it good looking? Now, when the Bible said it was good looking, was it that he went to go and do facial surgery? No, it means that he took care of himself. Meaning that if he could not even afford certain types of perfume, he at least he made sure that what he was giving the world was not body odor or mouth odor. Don't you understand something? The Bible said that after Joseph was in the prison and he needed to see the king, he had to shave. He had to shave. He needed to look good because there is a posture that you must look like when you are approaching the king. Uh, it's just the way I am, Jerry. I really don't care about those kind of things. Uh, it's the inward appearance. And see, not everybody's as discerning. Maybe you want to start first with outward. As you are developing inward. Do you understand? Because I don't, before you say, bless the Lord. We you bless the Oh. You see, we are laughing about these things. But you see, in the world that we are in, these things do matter. It does matter. The Bible speaks, speaking concerning Esther. Esther, such a wise woman, went to meet the guy that was in charge of the beauty. Party. He says, teach me how to look so that I can please this king. Hey. They said he was a talented heart player. Can I ask, if they were to line people that are talented in the organization, would they find you as the number one? Okay, let's even say first five. Because maybe there are a lot of talented people. We agree you are the one that makes, you are the one that does prayer in the office. We know. You are the one that before every meeting, we say, no, 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 no. Can we just dedicate it to the hand of the Almighty? We get it. But after the prayer, and they say, can we review the numbers? Can you also be the one to say, you see, um, we have been going on a 2% trajectory over last quarter. And it seems as though that if we are able to apply one, two, three, we may be able to shoot up our levers of sales. Can you bring intelligent conversation to the table? I'll give you guys one funny, not funny, something that, uh, so I'll give you another small piece about me. I'm, I'm a very private person. I seldom like to put my business out there, so you seldom see social media. It's like more and more, it's like, I don't even take it away from me. But I've come to understand that when you are preaching, man, God just likes to expose things that I'll naturally not say, he gets me saying it. So, I'll say this. On Friday, I had a dinner 
a gala night to be, to be honest. I had a gala night with um, my line manager, my boss. And we're going to, it was a French week, so light, 90% of the people that were there were white people. They were speaking, je veux dire, je veux dire. And I didn't know, je veux dire, je veux dire. At least yet. But God has given me that as a mandate. Sister Shola, Sister Shola, she knows what I'm talking about. God has given us, God gave me a mandate that I need to learn French. All right. Um, so I got in there. First things first. It was a gala night. On Fridays, I naturally like wearing my native because I've worn suit Monday to fr- Thursday. So my default any day is my native palm slippers of choice, carry my big belly, and I'm good. But I understood this was a gala. Are you there? I went to check the, the dress code. They say, dress code, it's a gala. Can you imagine such sarcasm? Like, who does that? Like, Duh. I remember that I had this jacket that I, in, t- in fact, God literally told me, oh, they do this type of jacket for this type of occasions. It was a gala looking type of jacket. You know those ones I used to have uh, lapel, you have the suede, aka apoche, you know that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I also had the shoes that were velvety, black, and I wore it. Now I got in there. My pass was on my phone. Everybody had physical pass because we we're also sponsoring the event. Just by the way I was looking, nobody asked me for my pass. Now this is a very secular environment. Very. I, nobody knew me in the capacity of Pastor Lumide. I was wearing another cap. I was wearing my official cap there. But I stepped into the place. I was there on time. Though it's a gala by 7 p.m., I was there. My God, my God was late. So, Lumdi, are you there? I said, I am, ma. Give me some minutes. I said, no problem. She gets in there. I was situated at the door. So that the moment she comes, I'm the first person to see her. She was about to dial my phone. I said, hi. I said, oh, wow, I was trying to call you. Then we started making our rounds. I didn't know when this woman started introducing me as... This is Olumide, the blah, 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 blah. He's literally the best that we've ever had in this industry. <laughs> Guys, I did not go there with the eloquent words of spiritual wisdom. I showed up looking good. I showed up having data. I showed up looking presentable. I showed up looking like the kind of person that should represent God in a place. Is somebody listening to me? Now, because I now carry God, it's not like as if I'm doing promo to my world. Do you get me? So I went there. And because she's new in town, some of these guys that were there were people I know. So I go there and I see her. And, Hi, long time. and she's looking at me like, ah, how does this black one... In fact, there was a particular table that she was sitting on because she was supposed to be a guest speaker. My friends came on that table. My friends. I'm saying friends that are captains of industries. I call them. So when I saw them on the same table, I went to greet them and they saw me and they hugged me. My boss was like, who is this boy? You know, and I told her, hi, this is the, 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 this is the dada da for Lagos State. This is the, 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 the. she owns the best, the, 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 the. she's been in front. She's like, wow, Olumide, you have such a rich network. Guys, in the marketplace, I socialize. I don't drink, oh, hey. For some of you that now think that socializing is, mm, mm, mm. I am not consumed with wine. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. But when I go to those places, I'm pleasant. Hi, how do you do? You look good. Oh, wow, such an amazing personality. I grew to grow my network. Now I'm in a place where I'm in the any stage of my life because I chose learning first. I didn't just amass and say, yeah, this is me. I'm now the biggest shot in this place. Everybody bows to me. I, they would look at me and they would, come on. Guys, I'm begging. You see, the type of Christianity God is bringing to the end time is the one that people must be people that he can boast of. 
people that he can boast of. So this man, Jesus, the Bible says, God put on him a tormenting spirit. But you know why God can do that? Because he knew that the antidote was not far away. There was a skillful person around. You see, even God loved Saul. So he would not give him something that had no cure. But guess what God was trying to do? He was trying to also draw David into priest, into kingship. Come and see what it looks like when you do not have my presence. The learning stage of life. Jesus in the temple, the Bible says he was listening and asking questions. Do you know that most of the people that he was listening to them were the people that he was in the later part of his years he was going to challenge their beliefs. He was going to, in fact, chastise them. But that was his learning stage. That was not the time Jesus would enter the temple and kick the offering basket, the things that they were selling outside. That was another season of his life. Is somebody there? So some of us, maybe you need to pray this prayer. God, what season am I? So, so that I can apply my heart to wisdom. I'll give you another analogy. There was a time when I was in my former place of work. I had this boss. Oh, my days. Ooh. Sorry, just remembering. <sighs> Auntie Ellie is so wrong. That Auntie can talk. Hello, there. Hey, hey, hey. I'll sack you. I didn't. <sighs> you would have thought that my prayer point there, Lord, get me. I think my prayer point itself was, Lord, get me out. But God kept me there. Guys, can I shock you? My promotion came from her hand. Not from her hand. She was my life manager when I was promoted. And she had, for you to be promoted in that place of work, your life manager has to vouch for you. Some of you, let me just advise you. You are in an organization. You are the one having fight with the HR. Use wisdom. Wisdom is profitable. Right? I don't like the way they talk to me in that place. I know. In this life, there will be many troubles. So, Yusuf, calm down. Do you understand me? And something happened. The, sin, the CEO, and you know, the Holy Spirit reminded me of this thing. I was like, oh, wow. The global CEO of that organization is a multinational. It's everywhere in the world. The global CEO was coming to Nigeria and they needed him to go to a certain part of the business. They will not bring him to the mainland for fear of you know who now. So they said he should go to the island. But the guys in the island, they were not strong hands. The island boys were play play boys. They were the boys that would come to work at any time and they would just go into one outlet or two outlets and before you know it, they are off. And they seemed like as if they had no control. But the business needed somebody that could take charge of that territory for a short time. In fact, they literally brought these people as like a squad mission to sanitize that place for the awaiting of this man. So they pulled me out from the scurry Ikotu Egbe that I was. Where I was managing beer parlors in Ikotu, Isolo, Ejibo. Are you laughing? Don't do that. That was my first place of assignment. Iyanoba, Ojo, Iyanoishashi, Abanroje. Those were my places. No, they didn't give me first stack. They didn't give me Fourth Avenue. No, and I went to Cavendish University. Yes, I have a T1 from Cavendish University. Bishop literally laid his hands on me, and I was in this place selling to women. That I could no longer use this English that I'm saying right now. So I had to move from Madam, what do you want to Madam Kilefe now? And I was in a call. And I was in this place. Then I was going out with my Oga to go to the places that I normally go to that I was excelling in, in my own little cupboard. Where nobody knew. My trade was so bad that senior men in the organization, they don't want to come to my place. So they just assumed that we know you are doing well. Because they didn't want to come there. So it was just me and my life manager. And boy knows I was doing well. Guess what happened, guys? We were working together. See, oh, I, somebody's going to get it. We were working together and an email came into my own phone. And the email says, we are deploying Olumide to manage VI effective in two days. I showed my boss. My boss did not even have the email. Where did the conversation of Olumide's excellence get to? 
that when they needed a rescue team, they could take that decision even without consulting his organ. I showed my life manager and she said, never. They can't take my best hand. It was then I knew that was her best hand. No. She called the divisional manager. I literally heard her voice from high altitude. To, yeah, okay. Eh, okay. All right now. Ah, okay. Olumide, be going. Guys, I went to this place and every morning, I have to report by 7 a.m. And for me to get there at 7 a.m., I need to be out of my house by 6 a.m. That level of dedication to timeliness does not befall you because you just change territory. It has to be something that you were practicing your learning stage. As a matter of personal choice, I didn't like the island then because it was that job that taught me driving and I knew that a lot of those VIO people were on the island looking for who to devour and one way abounded in those places. So I didn't want to go to the island for fear of don't let them catch me. It means that God is just helping me. Thank God for the official car. We don't have car in our house. But God had to stretch me. I started going to the island. I started becoming one that was familiar with the island. I started being the one that would drive from from, how many of you know Costain? There's this popular market there. Uh, Ikpanri. My distributor was in Ikpanri market. And I have to move every morning. I drive from my house to my distributors. Then my guys will now move from that place and go to as far as Lekki. And I, in the afternoon, after I do the meeting in the morning and I see that they have the right products, nobody is cheating, nobody stole your gas money, everybody has the right product, and they did it, then I will now drive to Lekki. Then I will now start going bar to bar. Beer parlor to beer parlor. Madam, did my boy come? He did not come. Oh, okay, I get the product for inside car. You go buy, man. Bam, take. And I'll move like that. Then because I knew somebody was coming, we had to now start looking for places that were not the kind of places that you would expect that, you know, people will go to just in case. Because I was in an organization where you can be driving your ogre and you are the one in front leading him to the place that you are taking him to. And you check your rear mirror and ogre has parked. Why did he pack? He saw one mal- one malam, malam, selling Malta Guinness, and he's checking there whether the malam has enough stock. Oh God, who get time? So what do you do? As a salesman, you come from the beginning of the street, every single place where they sell, from water to drinks to every single thing. Sometimes these people cannot afford a full crate. You break it down in six bottles and you sell just so that you can get what they call distribution. Guys, this is me. I'm not living a story. I'm telling you how I became who I am. And I would do that. And I would do that. And I remember one of the most turbulent bars that I ever had. It was such a big bar that my competitors were giving the woman heaven and, on earth, heaven and earth. And trust me, I don't know why God always takes me to companies that Akagom small. So I will go use persuasive selling skills, be friends with the woman, madam, please. So they said my boss was going to come on this day. Don't forget, this is the global CEO. The ones that if he's not happy, the MD for Nigeria is fired. Yes, that's it. So, two weeks, I've been prepping for that place. I will put my banners, my competition will come, remove it. I will put another one, they will come again, remove it. After a while, I'll be staying on the island till 10 p.m. Watching over my banner. Because when they see my car, they will what? Pass over. Because my car is branded. That should be, if you could cut away your poster at me now. Guys, I had to do this. I was born again. I was not comfortable with the industry. But I had to excel there. So on the D-Day, that was when we were promoting this brand. It just came out then, Origin. I spoken to the woman, Madam, I'm going to run a promo in your outlet. Everything must be Origin here. Da, 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 da. I did all that. And everywhere was, woo, picture of success. I was happy. Everything was going as I planned. All of a sudden, 
I get a call. He's coming. <laughs> it was more than rapture that day. And the MD says, Olumide, please make sure. No, the MD told the head of sales, ensure that the retail manager is not in that place. I don't want any flops. In my place of glory, where I have done so much, the MD says, no, it should be high level, me, the sales director. When I say me, I mean the MD, the sales director. So I, hi- I went back into my car, hiding. Because that is the learning stage of your life. Where you put in a lot and they can still decide to conceal you just because of his glory. And I was there, just hoping that everything goes right. Because I was not even there to quickly do fixes. So God has to help me. One, one person should not just come there and just start to order different types of drink. That will not make my guy say, why are they drinking this? It means they are not on top. And from nowhere, my sales manager, my sales director says, Olumide, this place is going so well. He texted me. Just sneaking. I say, hey. MD, say don't go. <laughs> say that, don't say go. So I snuck in. And from afar, the guy saw me. He says, um, sir, these things were made to happen by the guy over there. He's the sales manager. He's the, one, he's the sales, he's the retail guy for this place. He was the one that made all these things happen. And guys, I walked to the front. And where none of my colleagues ever had the opportunity, I shook the hands of the global CEO of this organization. And he was asking me, so how were you able to put this together? Then my English came to bear. Then I started. We started this bar with an offtake of da 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 cases, but we've been able to go chat. See, that I was speaking to Yarisika did not stop the fact that when there was a performance and there was a demand for certain things, it was not there. So what am I saying? For some of you, some of the things that you have learned in the past, don't throw it away. I could have decided to also lose guard and now become raggedy. Maybe I'm now in a raggedy environment. No. Can I shock you? I was selling in places like Yanoba, but I was still wearing TM shirts. Because it was about me. I knew my content. I knew who I was. And the guy was like, oh, wow. And he shook me, very strong, firm grip. And I said, thank you, sir. And I walked. The learning stage of life is so crucial that it is not a time for you to pray to skip. Now to God be the glory, like I said on Saturday, I have meetings with multinationals, with business owners, with tycoons, with industry captains. But these things are still speaking. My colleague is here. Emmanuel is here. Emmanuel will tell you one thing. He said one of the reasons why he respected me in my place of work was I took a stand for righteousness. So he could relate the Olumi Day on Sunday with the Olumi Day on Monday. You only get these things in your learning stage. I think I'm going to stop in learning stage today. And why am I saying so? I feel very strongly that a lot of us are in our learning stage. But we are so quick to get out of it. The same way David could have been very quick to get out of it. How would you explain that the man that I play for to get a demon out of him would now in a split second chase me with a javelin then I will have the opportunity to kill him, but the God in me will not allow me. And this did not happen once. It happened twice. David was already living, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm, even before that was even said. So when you see God say, David is a man after my heart. As I read something about David that also blew my mind. I'll share that with you. The Bible said that when David was king, when he was king, and he was trying to take over the land of the Philistines. By the way, I'm sure you know that when the Philistines chased after Saul, and Saul committed suicide because he said, I'm not going to die by their hands. So he killed himself with a sword. The Bible said the Philistines ravaged the entire land of the Israelites. So what it meant was that the Israelites now became fugitives in their own land. So David started to become a king in a fugitive country. Where 
Philippians, the Philistians were taking a good portion of the land. The Bible said there was this day, David took up a small portion. And that was why they called the city of David. And the Bible said, and David said, I long to drink from the well of, I can't remember now, I think somewhere in Bethlehem. And that place was actually in the territory that was close to where the Philippians were. The Bible said that three men, loyal men, they said, you know what? We will get you that water. Guys, David did not get those men from that time. He got them from the time where he was in Ziklag, where he was a rebel. Though a rebel, he was training men. Learning stage. To the point that a flinting desire, this man said that we will get it for you. But you know what shocked me about what David did? The Bible said that when they got it and they brought it, David said, not unto me. I will not drink it. Something that men had risked their life for. Do you know what I'm going to do? I will offer it unto God as an offering. Do you know what? As we, if you were the one that got in that water and you see him do that, do you know how you want to live and die for that guy? So some of you, you are struggling with friendship. Can you pick a cue from David? And the generation that we typify friendship by, oh, you didn't buy me this, you didn't buy me that. Can we start to give too? When your friend gives you something, how well do you appreciate it? How well do you, hey, how well do you treasure them? The guys that were exiled men became mighty men. What was the constant in their life? David. And guess what, guys? When David became king, he did not leave them. The Bible said, and the kingdom was made strong by the mighty men of David. The learning stage of your life helps you to appreciate people. It allows you to not take people for granted. David was already a dawn. God said, yeah, get me that cup, man. Ha, look at me. This is the blood of people, man. That's what's up, man. I'm, 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 a, I'm a G. G in Bo. Giovanni. He was so given to loyalty. But he had to learn it in his learning stage. We will rise up this instant. I will say, Lord, I receive grace to keep in my learning stage. I receive grace to stay in the place of my process. Guys, pick a cue from Saul. Pick a cue from Solomon. You can have it all and it will still be meaningless. David fought valiantly in battle. Because he knew his God. David will say, I would rather be in your hands than in the hands of my enemies. Because in your hands there is mercy. Because he knew his God. How many people want to know God more this time? If you subscribe into that, then you are saying, God, take me to the place of learning again. You see, another thing I found out is even when you move from learning to earning, you don't stop learning. The Lord said I should tell somebody this. And when he told me, he really, really, you know, changed my mind. You know the same way you have seasons that we are in the morning right now. Right? This is still morning. Right? But there is a part of the world that somebody is in their night. But it's still the same time. My time says morning. Their time says night. God is saying that while you look at people and you covet their morning season, he didn't create you to covet their morning season. Their morning season is supposed to give you hope that your morning too will come. So stop praying prayers like God when? God now? Start to thank him that God, if they experience mourning, 
my morning comments. And if you are the kind of person that you are afraid that I'm in my morning season and I'm afraid that something bad will happen to me, I want you to understand something that God gives what over his children. You know what God allows you to do when it's night? He allows you to sleep. So that guess what can happen? He can keep watch over you. So whichever the season of life that you are in, whether you are in your early season and things are happening for you, pa, 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 and you are afraid that you will lose it, no! God is your sure God. And if you are in that season of life where it seems like as if everything is dark, rejoice like Emmanuel said. Because your light is about to come. The Bible says, don't darkness cross. Sorry? No. Joy comet in the... Sorry, sorry. Don't sorrow. Yeah. Guys, you serve a God that wants to show you off. Do you know that? He delights in showing you off. And for him to show you off, he needs to make you. You know the way a fantastic chef will put the food in display. But that the fact that the food is beautiful does not mean it tastes nice. So after you look at the food, the chef will still tell you what? Taste it. God is saying to someone, I'm about to get the world to taste of what I've put inside of you. Is somebody there? I've been privileged to buy perfumes in my life and some of them come in very fantastic bottles but you know what I have seen when I go to the duty free they only put bottles there but you also see testers they'll say sir don't just be wowed by the bottle spray it smell it God is saying to somebody I'm about to spray you to your world and when they smell you they will know that I'm a good God when they smell you, they will know that I'm a great father. Can you just lift up your hands today and say, Father, Lord, I subscribe to this house for learning. Teach me your ways. Teach me to be excellent. Teach me to do things that you want me to do, Lord. I receive grace today, Lord. I don't want to be one that is given to, to the fleeting things of life. Now, Paul said, do not be drunk with wine. Desire to be filled with the Holy Ghost. The Bible says how Jesus was anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power. And he went about doing what? And healing all those that were oppressed of the enemy. Guys, this message is to show you the importance of the Holy Spirit. So when you get into life, from when you step out of that door make a conscious habit of saying I know you are here with me Holy Spirit I know you are here with me Holy Spirit because that is the gift money was not the gift the gift was the Holy Spirit and as you use him as you fellowship with him he starts to show you the path of life you know the Bible says and he will show me the path of life in his presence there is fullness of joy and at his right hand there are pleasures forever but he needs to show you the path of life if there's anybody here that is going through something like a mountain like a stumbling block something that feels like as if it's standing always before you I want you to raise up your hand with all eyes closed I want everybody to just start to meditate on this word if you are here and you've heard everything I've said and you're like pastor I want to learn but this mountain seems so difficult I don't seem to move past it there is a dissolving anointing in the house today and you need to just give yourself over I give myself away oh Give myself away so you can use me. I give my 
myself with oh, I give myself with so Father, Lord, the lives of your children are here. As they raise their hands, Lord, they raise it in surrenderness. And they say, Father, Lord, they've come to see that everything is meaningless except for a life that is in surrenderness to you. And so they surrender their lives with all these things that look like baggages, Lord. All these things that look like failures of the past. All these things that look like they can't go beyond their past. It seems like as if it keeps holding them back, telling them who they are not. He seems to be telling them that they cannot achieve the things that you have said concerning them. Lord, their hands are up right now. And they are saying, Lord, if you can break the yoke in the past, you can break this yoke. The Lord, they are saying that, Lord, if you can change a man, you can change me. Lord, they are saying that if you can change situations, you can change this one. So, Lord, we ask that your yoke-breaking power, it becomes activated in their life. And every stronghold from today becomes broken in the name of Jesus. Father Lord, their hearts are open to learn. And Lord, your word says you will lead them beside still waters. You will redeem their souls in the name of Jesus. Father Lord, there are some that are here and it's about debt. They are indebted. There are some that are here. And it seems like as if they are so close to always failing and they are starting to doubt themselves. Father, Lord, come and turn things around such that their season will change from sadness to joy, from weeping to dancing in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, they have come because they know you are the helper. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, that within one week help reaches them in the name of Jesus Father Lord I pray for everyone that is struggling in their Christian faith they want to believe but they just can't move past the hurt the hurt of praying and maybe not getting answers or the hurt of feeling like their life is not is not the way it should be Lord I ask that as they start to worship as they start to create time to just commune with you you will flood their hearts in the name of Jesus you will take them back to the place of believing again in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for everyone that feels like they're handicapped. Handicapped because they feel they have no comparative advantage. They look at themselves and all they see is defects. They look at themselves and all they see is what they do not have. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you show them what you see in them. I say you show them what you see in them. As you saw great and mighty man of valor in Gideon, I pray, oh God, that you show them what you see in them. Father Lord, I pray that you bless them with these three things. Time as a resource. Money as a resource. People as a resource. In the name of Jesus. I pray that the Lord blesses you with time as a resource. Meaning that you are not going before your time. In the name of Jesus. I pray that the Lord blesses you with financial resources. Meaning that all you need for life and godliness, the Lord provides. And then I pray the Lord blesses you with people. People that stood by Moses and they could uphold his hand. People that will go for David and will get him water. People that will stand in the place of intercession. People that will be covenant partners of prayer for you. People that will teach you when you do not know. People that you can confide in when you are confused. People that will keep you in prayers and will take matters up in prayers as against talking to people about it. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I decree over these ones that you help them redeem time. Everyone that feels like they've lost their better years to riotous living, I decree that your best years are ahead of you. In the name of Jesus. For everyone, God came and he intervened in their matter. Their life was better than it was in the past. So I decree that your better days are ahead of you in the name of Jesus. I decree that no one is permitted to fall again in the name of Jesus. The things that made it so slippery that you fell without even thinking. Today your feet is stable. In the name of Jesus. I pray that the newness of life that Jesus experienced on earth. You start to experience it in the name of Jesus. 
every thought of suicide ends now in the name of Jesus that spirit that says you are not good enough is dispelled in the name of Jesus I say you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus you are so valuable that he could die and that is why I say to you that your life is blessed because Jesus is in you the fullness of work of the Holy Spirit starts to make manifest in you right now in the mighty name of Jesus if you are here and you know that you've not given your life to Christ and you just feel like you've been backsliding or you feel that your life has not been on the right track there is no greater time than to join this family the one thing the enemy is going to tell you right now is he's going to want to infuse shame but let me tell you something if the devil is not scared he will not tell you about shame he's only telling you shame because he feels that he has something to lose and yes he has something to lose so can you for once shame the devil and come out can you for once shame the devil and say you know what today i want to make it right if you are here and you've not given your life to christ or maybe you have and like i've always said you've taken it back you've taken you've taken it back and you've made yourself the judge of your own life this is a good time to say lord i give you my life again if you are here and you believe that's what i'm saying is talking to you please don't be shy just come forward sometimes you need to come forward so that the devil knows that there is no place of doubt there's no place of doubt if you are online you can also stand you can just you know uh, uh, reach out to us on, on on the private section and for anyone that is online i just pray right now that god fills you with staying power you will no longer fall in the name of jesus from today there will be a holy hunger to learn from the feet of jesus in the mighty name of jesus thank you heavenly father for in jesus name we pray jam your hands together for jesus